The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Trade Ideas Trade of the Week webinar. Myself, Steve Gomez, is going to be hosting, and Andy Linloff is going to help me out. Hello, Andy. Hey, Steve. How's it going, buddy? Oh, it's good. Good, good. for Tuesday. Hours are just flying by today. Um, all right. Uh, thanks for showing up, everybody. Um, Scott, the normal marketing person, is knee-deep in our final preparations for the um, uh, Holly Summit 2017 in Carlsbad, California this weekend. So it's just myself uh, acting as host and also moderator, and Andy's going to help me out. So real quick, uh, keeping in the same vein as what we always do, I'm going to launch a quick poll here. Uh, we're going to take a look and see the first question is very binary. Are you a Trade Ideas subscriber or are you not a Trade Ideas subscriber? So I've uh, gone ahead and launched that poll. It looks like uh, people are clicking into it, so that means it's working. Uh, while I do that, uh, I'm assuming you guys can hear me. If I click uh, questions and open it up, sounds great. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, friend. And we'll leave that poll open here until we get a bit more of a quorum. Again, simple binary question, are you a current subscriber or are you not? And if you're not, hopefully we can maybe give you some ideas in the next hour as to why you might want to at least try a month. I'm going to have a promo code at the end of this webinar, which will save 15% off your first month for new users. So keep that in mind. All right, let's close that poll. Uh, a little bit more uniform this week. Um, we share that out. Typically, it's more uh, two-thirds have it and one-third don't, I think. Am I right, Andy, or is it usually half and half? I can't recall. Yeah, it, it ebbs and flows. I've seen yeah. it around the 15-50 mark a lot. Cool. Now, your next poll that you're going to – that's yeah. the one. Yeah, so 50-50. Really so yeah. good to know that half the attendees uh, so far here um, are not current subscribers. So, again, um, make sure you stick around for that promo code or at least uh, check the uh, recording because – the webinar is being recorded and will be uploaded to our web channel, Trade Ideas YouTube channel later this evening. All right, here comes the second poll real quick, and this is only for those that do subscribe to Trade Ideas currently. Are you on the premium package using the AI odds maker and price alerts, or are you on the standard version using the alerts, which is basically um, our basic alerts? Top lists, multi-strategy, channel window, charting gradients. Uh, that's pretty much the difference. Uh, the premium has the AI, the back testing, and shareable price alerts that you can share with each other. All right. Give about 10 more seconds here for a bit more uh, data to come in, but uh, appreciate all of your all's participation. All right. So let me go ahead and close that poll, and it's... Pretty much the same. Uh, looks like another 50-50 split. So half of you um, are using the premium, which is great, and the other half are not. And I will remind you that uh, that's kind of standard procedure from what we see. A lot of people uh, start with a standard package, get familiar with the scans and the different type of alerts, the program, and then they decide if they have a need to maybe upgrade uh, to do some more advanced studies like back testing or using the AI, which is our, our tool. So thank you for that. Let me hide that um, poll, and we will go back to screen share. Um, am, am, are we on screen sharing? You're there. You are. Okay. You are. Trade ideas, trade of the week, September 26, 2017. Uh, real quick, the disclaimer page. I uh, just love reminding you all that um, we're not brokers. We're not registered investment advisors. So anything you see or hear today should not be considered as investment or financial advice. If you're looking for some specific financial advice, custom tailored to your personal situation, you got to seek out the guys that spent the time doing all the studying and taking the uh, the exams on uh, fiduciary responsibility and such. And they also take a fee, by the way. All right. So real quick, you're not alone with trade ideas. Um, I always forget, so I'll say on the onset. Again, those of you who are thinking about the 15% off coupon that have not uh, tried trade ideas yet, 
What's not on this slide is the fact that you are eligible for a one-hour one-on-one training session where we share the screen with you and only you. So it's a one-on-one -on -one session to kind of help you orient yourself for what you want to get out of trade ideas, share a couple of scans with you, help you create a scan, help you with your layouts, whatever it is. And typically it's been about 10 days probably since you've signed up before you get to that one-on-one. -on -one. And that's good because that gives you 10 days to kind of come up with some questions, get your hands dirty and start to see what it is that you might be looking for going forward. So that is not on this slide, but it's one of our main concierge onboarding um, uh, benefits. It's $99 if you want to have a second session. So, geez, if you consider that free session a $99 value plus the 15% that you're getting off the, the promo code, uh, not a lot of reasons to not try the first month and see if 30 days is, is enough for you to make a great decision as to whether you want to move on or not. Um, just a quick hint at that slide. A lot of people do decide they want to move on. Um, but back to this slide, uh, four webinars during the week, all at the same time, 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, yesterday I helped out Jamie. Today is the trade of the week with myself and Andy. Tomorrow is going to be Brad and Dan, the CEO of Dan Merkin. They'll go over some questions and answers, talk about what's new with the technology, uh, where the technology is heading, um, a little bit more um, interactive. And then Thursday's trading studio. That's just kind of what's going on uh, with Andy and Jamie as his um, sidekick on Thursdays. And we do not have a 2 o'clock webinar on Fridays because we have a three-hour Friday support session from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, same um, uh, go-to webinar interface that you guys are experiencing here, but there's no agenda. Uh, we don't just, you know, keep talking at you. We just kind of wait to see what you guys want to talk about. And so that three-hour support session is great for the traders um, that signed up for the maybe during that week uh, and they're new to the product. It's a great place to come stop by and get some custom support. All you got to do is ask the questions in the question box, and we just take them one by one as they come and give you guys um, some real uh, custom tailored support. So all in all, this slide really is um, you're not alone with trade ideas. We do our best to try and help onboard you and give you the concierge support that you deserve because it is a very intense program, and the learning curve is, you know, it's rather lengthy on this particular program. You can't learn it overnight. Again, there's our subscriber growth. Uh, we are very happy about that. That's why we are continuing to um, bring on new people, uh, such as Sean McLaughlin, who was recently with StockTwits, a great trader many years, has a great understanding of our product as well. So good things just continue to happen. Uh, before we get into today's um, agenda, just a quick reminder that there is a beta program that's not been released yet, and it is a very advanced program. It's called Brokerage Plus. Uh, you need to have an active interactive brokers account, and you also need to have an active Trade Ideas premium account to have access to uh, the Brokerage Plus, which essentially allows you to take your custom scans and automate them and connect them with interactive brokers and put in your stop losses, your risk parameters, your upsides, and whatnot. Um, it begs the question, can I plug Holly into interactive brokers? And at this time, the answer is no. It's still only for your own custom scans and, um, and your methodology alone. And this is a very advanced, intermediate to advanced program. If you're a new trader, I would recommend getting your feet wet in the market first for a couple of months before you even attempt uh, something like this uh, that is automated. I can't take this slide out of here. Uh, it's going to be the theme coming up this weekend at our Carlsbad Summit. Um, no man is better than a machine, while no machine is better than a man with a machine. So a man with a machine, a human with a machine, a trader with a machine, an investor with a machine is stronger than anybody else or any machine by itself. And that's the theme, uh, man plus machine. We're going to talk a lot about that this weekend. Um, if you haven't signed up for the live stream, um, you know, follow me on Twitter. I'll give you that Twitter handle at the end. I've been tweeting at least once a day on how you can sign up for the free live stream of this weekend's event. But again, that's going to be the theme. And what we're bringing to you today is trade ideas. That is the machine. And us as the traders are the humans that have to bring some discretionary knowledge um, along with that uh, to make this uh, Paul Tudor Jones quote actually ring true. All right, agenda for today is pretty typical. Uh, we'll do a market recap, 
Uh, I'll take a look at uh, some indexes and point out things that are of interest. Uh, we've got some screenshots today and some interesting takes on a couple of trades in the Holly recap and trade of the week recaps. We'll take a look at the last couple trade of the weeks as well as this week, which is basically not triggered. It's sitting in the garage. It is not triggered, but we will talk about it. Uh, we'll take a quick sector glance and then uh, maybe, maybe time for a few chart requests uh, as we get to the end. So that's going to be the drill for today. Let me bring up trade ideas. This is my default layout. And welcome to my layout, everybody. All right. As promised, let's take a look at the um, market recap. Uh, you guys can see, oh, which, by the way, maybe some of you haven't noticed, but now we can have cross. Did you notice? Did you notice this, Andy? Look at look what I'm doing here. I got my crosshairs on, and I'm working with oh, interesting. with a uh, a line or a trend line. So if you guys don't have it yet, just know it's coming. I know it's been in the past where we have to go in and turn our crosshairs off before we can grab these lines. But guess what? Now we can grab them, and we don't have to turn our oh, crosshairs nice. off. Isn't that nice? Very nice. See, uh -huh. we're we're uh, we're open to suggestions, <laughs> <laughs> and I think we got definitely uh, a few of those suggestions. Let me just check something here real quick. Okay, so let's start with the S&P 500. Um, the point that I made earlier is the path of least resistance is still higher. Uh, this was yesterday, uh, kind of a similar washout bounce candle or a hammer candle that we all have talked about ad nauseum, at least in my webinars. And this will also come into play when we talk about the trade of the week. But ideally, these washout bounce candles, uh, they get built on the next day with some higher prices. Well, if we look at the intraday, bit of a tough day um, with a gap up, a complete filling of the gap. And then I won't spend too much time on it, but uh, Janet Yellen kind of came in and started talking about how she's disappointed with uh, their inflation targets and the market liked to hear that. And so for the rest of the day, we got some kind of a, a little bit of a Fed speak market, Fed goosed market. But nonetheless, uh, we did have a gap up, filled the gap and then right back up. So typically these are not going to be the best risk on type of days. Uh, when we talk about Holly and letting a broad based rally work for open positions, when you have a market that gaps up, falls down, goes negative, back to positive, back to negative on the close, it, may, it makes it kind of tough. But nonetheless, the bigger picture is what we're concerned about here. This trend line I redrew, even though there was this mess down here where there was a week in time when I actually was officially bearish. But if you guys follow me, you know that I took that hat off right about here and said I was wrong. Not the first time, won't be the last time. But here we are. Um, this trend line is still intact. We built off that nice hammer candle yesterday. Not much to say about the S&P 500. I mean, the path is still, least resistance is still up if we're going to continue to put in lower highs along the way. All right, let's go to the NASDAQ. NASDAQ yesterday was giving us a bit of a scare. What was the volume yesterday in the NASDAQ? Yesterday, NASDAQ volume was 59 million versus today, 29 million. Okay, so we're playing that game again. Okay, <laughs> big volume down days with gap up, low volume recovery days. But this doesn't really tell the whole picture. What tells the picture is what's going on underneath with Amazon. You guys want to see a textbook head and shoulders pattern? Well, Amazon might fit the bill for that one. We'll see what the uh, data coming in the next week brings. Um, Google was having also kind of a tough time, but a nice reversal candle yesterday. Um, Netflix also having some tough times, part of the FANG stocks, Facebook. So you can kind of see why yesterday, that's an ugly chart, by the way, in Facebook. You can kind of mm -hmm. see why the NASDAQ was a little bit in trouble yesterday. What's the volume on this Facebook? 41 million down. And then today, 23 million on stabilization. So another big volume candle down. And even if I look down here at the volume candles, today I also had some extra special volume in there when it looks like normal volumes around 12 to 13 million. So um, back to the queues. Uh, the queues threw up a little bit of a warning sign yesterday, but bounced back at the end of the day. End of end of day buyers found their way back into um, that candle. And believe it or not, that was the worst of the uh, the four yesterday on the um, uh, hammer type bottoming tail candles because if we go to the diamonds nice bottoming tail yesterday but a little bit of give back today diamonds may not be done there IWM been threatening 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 it goes above it takes out highs and then it pulls right back three days in a row it's done that you guys high pullback 
go through highs, pull back, go through highs, pull back. So we're trying to maybe get some narrative here on the IWM that maybe the small cap Russell 2000 is where uh, the market wants to pass the baton to for sector rotation next, but never really can seem to get a nice clean close on highs. Um, but for the most part, if we draw this line, let's do it right now. There's our new line in the sand on IWM. The good news is IWM for the last two days has closed and posting a close above these levels that I put in here is very important. So IWM is trying to build. What does that mean for you guys? Well, tomorrow, um, if you see some stocks that are coming through the AI or some of your favorite scans that are under $5 or under $10, chances are, you know, those are um, low cap stocks that may be a part of the uh, Russell 2000. And based on the IWM, that seems to be where the strength is trying to hold up, but we shall see. But I want to make no um, uncertain terms or no confusion about it. I am not bearish. Uh, I'm really not even neutral. Uh, the path of least resistance still appears to be back up after that little quagmire that we had um, last week. Um, let's see. There was something I wanted to talk about, too, during this segment. I cannot recall. I'll, I'll add while you uh, yeah, go I'll ahead. jump in while you're, while you're thinking about that and just uh, – it's so it's so difficult when you see the IWM, which was just really lagging behind the other major indices for several months, to, to sit here and witness them, you know, uh, the strong sector now. And then, and once again, it's all about rotation. It's what's been going on for eight years now, ever since the they took our <laughs> interest rates down to zero and forced people to put their money into risk assets. It's the only way you're going to be able to get any type of return or all at all so that's why you see this rotation uh, money will come out of tech and will go into small caps it'll come out of commodities and go back into tech you know it'll go into healthcare it'll go into solar it just it's a continue rotation and it can be kind of frustrating because back in the day you know gone are the days where you know all boat all boats rose together and they sank it no we don't see that anymore it's yeah. Not, yeah no more correlations <laughs> it's a constant rotation yeah. Uh, and until we get interest rates up back to a respectable level, you know, we can probably continue to see this. I think I know what it was I was going to say is that, um, uh, again, I had made an early allusion to it. Um, but down here, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I was going to say, actually. <laughs> Andy knows where I'm going with this now. <laughs> Amazon was looking really sickly. All right. That actually took out yesterday's lows today and popped right back up with no follow through. But as Amazon was looking really sickly here in the morning, Guess who started making comments in the media? Janet Yellen. I don't know if there was a correlation. A lot of people have the theory that the Fed watches the markets very closely, and maybe Amazon's mud starting to fall out of the hands of the Fed got the little attention. But um, there was some squawking today about how uh, the Feds are uh, a little concerned about inflation not showing up as much as they would have liked to have seen. And that ultimately means the market may get to play with some more um, – uh, easing and less uh, hawkish type um, headwinds coming ahead of us. But then at the end of the day, can't figure out what happened. A little bit of a sell-off there in the queues last half hour, spiders last half hour, diamonds last half hour, IWM half hour. I don't need and necessarily need a, an explanation as to why, but I did want to just kind of point that out to you guys. This was a really choppy day for the most part. And uh, the middle part of the day was kind of propped up in my opinion by, by the Fed. But, Again, no excuses. We don't make market decisions based on what people are telling us. We make it by what the footprints in the sand are telling us. And that's why we look at charts. Okay, so speaking of charts, um, let's delve into Holly. That's pretty much it for the market recap. Again, the path of least resistance is still up. No reason to be cautious uh, yet like we were a couple weeks ago. That has resolved itself. So let's move into Holly. A couple of quick observations. What I had mentioned earlier. Okay, here's the risk off histogram. It looks like an EKG, red, green, green to red, red to green, green to red, and so forth. That's the kind of day you would expect on risk on. What's risk on if you're not attuned? Risk on is basically using the uh, entry signals from Holly, the AI, but not getting out when she gets out. T that would be taking it all the way into the bell. Risk on stays on. But when we see a spider's SPY day that started up with a gap up, took us down negative, went back positive again, and then towards the close went negative again, this is the kind of histogram you would expect uh, for AI trades that are left open. 
these trades might do great tomorrow and whatever the market does and brings we don't know but during the day when we have choppy days we can kind of point towards you know what might be better on the whole and what might be better you know on a case-by-case -case basis because I do have a couple of case-by-case -case basis and I'll, I'll, I'll probably start with those and then I'll turn it over to Andy to finish over whatever I didn't touch on for the AI but um, a couple things of note today what did we have coming in Coming in, the players, we had very few players, and they were all going long. There were zero short strategies today. That was the first um, point that I noticed. Um, uh, yeah, Joe, you're right. The compare counts didn't really pan out today either, um, but that's a story for another day because I don't have those up here. But uh, I hear you. Um, the second observation is, uh, well, it's <laughs> the same as the first observation. Holly really only had a choice but to go long. Um, today could have been tr tremendously different. You know, we could have had a sell-off today, and a lot of these strategies may not have fired because there were no active short strategies sitting on the bench, you know, saying, put me in the game, coach. Nothing but long strategies coming into today and nothing but long strategies firing uh, throughout the day. I didn't see too much of really a sector bias. Uh, it was just kind of one after another that came through for the most part. Trade count in the end, I think, is around 13. And just so you know, in, in my world, I think anything under seven or eight trades is considered a low count. Maybe between eight and 20 is about normal. Anything above 20 is probably a higher trade count. So we had kind of a normal trade count today. But there are two trades I want to highlight. Um, the first would be, let me just go to the bottom here, um, SND. And let's 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 try and set the stage for SND here real quick. So here was SND early in the morning. Here's the Holly call on the blue line, and it pushed through, and then it fell back and just kind of wallowed a little bit. Well, what got Holly out of this stop? Ah, time stop. Okay, SND is part of the waking up family. Waking up is a 45-minute hold here in the parent strategy window. So basically all we had was 45 minutes. So 45 minutes into the day, um, Holly's getting out because the clock said to, but that doesn't mean you have to. And this is where I want to try and maybe help some people get to that point Well. How do I know if I should stay in or stay out, Steve? How do I know if I should go risk on or risk off? Well, here's my first screenshot. And this is right when Holly was getting out because the dark shaded area is still dark. That pretty much shows where Holly participated versus how it gets lighter for the rest of the day. That means that Holly basically got out at that darker shaded portion. But what can we um, derive from this info that I screenshot? Well, I love my my single stock window, which is this guy right here, and I'm always looking at the single stock window as stocks are making highs or lows or at critical levels. And so let's say somebody took this trade, and Holly's getting out, and they're like, oh, geez, what do I do? First thing I'm going to look at, relative volume. Two and a half times normal relative volume. That's a plus. That's a big plus. Five-minute volume is above 100, and one-minute volume was almost at 300. So what the volumes were telling me here was that there still was some interest in this stock. So you have two choices. You have three choices at this point. One, sell everything and just do what Holly says and try and keep it simple, and that way you can't beat up on yourself if you made the wrong decision. Step two is sell half of it. And selling half of it sometimes really does help the emotions, takes the greed and the fear demons away and puts them in the corner. But this would be a case where these volumes here are large enough to where selling half might be a wise choice. Or you can choose not to sell any at all and really go for it. Well, as we moved on throughout the morning, um, the chart did move higher. So looking at these volumes in screenshot number one, the stock was still trying to figure out what do I want to do, what I want to do. Well... We still had some decent volume in here, and for another 30 minutes or so, uh, there was a nice push to new highs. And then I think towards the end of the day, this one just kind of floundered around. But the point is, look at these 600%, 600% as the stock was pushing to new highs. That's the kind of stuff you want to see. That's the kind of stuff that says, oh, maybe I should hang around for some risk on. If you're scared of risk on, then you consider selling just half, and it makes it a lot easier to tolerate. So this is how that one pretty much figured out for the rest of the day, kind of went sideways after that little morning explosion that we did have up here. Um, and so I th think, uh, no, that's going to be in the next one. Okay, so here's the next one, LYB. Let's take a look at LYB. 
what do we got here? LYB. Wow, we want to see a lot of these. Target hit. You never get tired of seeing target hit. So let's double click LYB and you can see the gradient. There's the blue line purchase and not a whole lot of bar reversals or any hassles all the way up to the profit target. Well, once it hit the profit target, I said, well, what's going on? Do you want to you know, get out here or do you want to stay in? Well, back to the old single stock window. What were the metrics underlying that people who don't have trade ideas showing us? Here's the green bar pushing through, going beyond the target line. Pretty decent volume still there. Relative volume, not great, 40% more than normal. But the five minute volume was at 168 and the one minute volume was at 280. Um, so there was a little bit of meat left on the bone there. Not much longer after that, we started to get a little bit of pullback. And look at that. This is probably where I would say, okay, I'm done. These are very fast filters. They show up very quickly. And I circled it in red this time because you guys can see it went from 300% just about and 170% just about on those two time frames to very quickly volume drying up and a little bit of a red candle there. Now, let me just say, we don't have a crystal ball because when I pull this chart away, you're going to see the stock did go higher. But that doesn't help. In the heat of the moment, all we have is a couple of data points to make our decisions on. The chart and some of these volume metrics. So in the heat of the moment, I would never fault anybody for getting out of at least half, if not all, considering you hit the profit target, because it looks like this was beginning to run out of steam. And so I wanted to show you guys how to marry up these volume uh, single stock windows with some of these trades, especially when we get to new highs or time stop or target hit or hitting resistance that you've identified. These volumes can really be your friend. And of course, if we look at Lily, um, there was a nice push right there at the end of the day, but then that reversed on itself and then it just started to get real tricky. So, you know, hopefully that makes sense. Um, I, you know, I try to use those screenshots as often as possible because this is the kind of stuff that people who don't have trade ideas are missing out on. Um, some of these little volume metrics and little hints beneath uh, the surface that we see. My mouth's dry, right. Andy. Yeah, very good stuff there, man. Yeah, that's uh, very interesting uh, watching those uh, volume uh, volume levels at different uh, price levels. So that's uh, uh, mm -hmm. be very helpful. Yep. All right. Well, what and else we, we got? What we else we use them a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I was doing a session with um, a guy today when this, uh, and he asked me about risk on versus risk off, and this GHL okay. was was a very good example, and. You know, I, like I tell you guys and everybody who asked me about this, you know, risk on and risk off is, is not a system where we can just, uh, you know, take the best of both worlds. I always tell people anytime we publish these, uh, uh, the, the numbers for Holly, we always uh, present the uh, risk off. But we put the risk uh, on in there for you guys, man. So you guys can look at the end of the day and or any time during the day for that goes. If you do get out, you can see without having to go through every chart. You can just take a look at the uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, Holly window down there, the trade open trades window, and see uh, where the stock is currently after the uh, Holly exit. In GHL today, she got out for a very simple reduced risk for flat. She flatted the trade. But if you're in this trade and everything is lining up for you, and I and I always say keep an eye. The market's holding up; it's not doing anything. Um, the stock is holding a nice big gap up. Uh, it never went. I think another maybe another nickel lower from where Holly exited. This is a situation where you might want to say, "Hey, listen, I'm not going to get out of this because I'm just churning for getting out for a flat. I'm going to give myself a little more uh, leeway to the downside and and maybe hold on to this, uh, you know, a little bit longer." So that would be an example of you going risk on, even though Holly exited at risk off uh, under reduced risk. Uh, and you can see there it closed the day up 35 cents. I mean, didn't kill it, but at the same time, it, and you can actually see a wick there that moved up higher during the day and then came back down. So the point I'm, on, I'm, I'm trying to make here is you're going to see Holly get out for a lot of reasons, and, and one of them is going to be reduced risk. And if you're looking at the chart, and it's pretty much just going sideways, maybe you want to say to yourself, well, Holly got out for a flat. I'm going to hang on a little bit longer uh, because the market is kind of just chopping around sideways. 
Uh, nice gap up. There's still buyers in this stock, obviously, because it's never went to lows. So I'm going to hang on to this a little bit longer and see what I can get out of it. But that's a good example. Yeah, those, tight, I, those tight ranges, um, they make it very simple. It's either going to break down or it's going to break out. So when we talk about trade rounds or getting back into a trade that Holly may have given up on and we see a tight range, you know, it's a perfect example to just set your price alerts. Maybe you maybe you got out with Holly, but you, you looked back and you saw this is still a tight range. There may be some more meat on the bone with this big gap up today. Maybe I go ahead and set a price alert right about there at the top end of that range. And it was a bit of a fake out, but in the end, patience is a virtue. This could be the beginnings of a swing trade for somebody if they had not seen this come through. This might be the perfect setup that they're looking for. Nice gap up and closes um, near its highs. I want to quickly uh, double click into this one just to remind us all why we use uh, Adhere to Holly's stops. Stop, hit. This one exited for negative 40 cents on Holly. MAR uh, was quickly stopped out. There was our purchase. We went up a little bit and then a big fall down through grace. And right there, the AI said, this is it. This is the smart stop. Not going to risk it. And so when you see when you see stop hit, there's really not a lot of reasons to try and second guess um, Holly on the uh, stop hits. And in this case, uh, 40 cents turned into a dollar 32 loser pretty darn quick. And look at the interesting level here, how the stop level that was um, taken and chosen, the smart stop by the AI, actually created uh, and, and became, as it should, a pivot level. Support mm -hmm. became a pivot. And that was just, you know, that's just a further indication of how these are not numbers that are just being rolled out of some sort of, a, um, you know, um, lottery ball or a bingo ball <laughs> these these numbers they have meaning they have secret sauce they're looking in the past support resistance pivot atr volatility and other things i can't mention that are all part and parcel of that but it was interesting to see that it popped right back up to that level so that was a viable level and again stop hit is probably not something that you want to hem and haw about usually that means the ai is uh, not seeing it and you probably want to save yourself some some money if that's the case and if you're in one of those, I think we had one more we wanted to talk. Oh, HMNY, I think was the last the VNO one. VNO, too. Did you talk about VNO? No. I don't know. Let's take a look at VNO. Okay. VNO. Go ahead and talk about what you want to talk about with VNO. Oh, once again, just another pretty much risk-free uh, entry there. You see the entry, and you never see uh, a bar go below that little blue line. That's a really good sign. That's what you want to see if you're following Holly's trades uh, is a beautiful entry like that. And never any pain it basically just went straight up from, from there uh, and you know the daily is not all that uh, attractive but it was breaking up to a, basically about a month and a high you know month and a half high mm -hmm. and it went up to a level where it found resistance and you if Steve holds his uh, uh, yep well a little bit lower there Steve where it kind of pretty much the high of the bar today Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, just to, uh, you know, ran into a little bit of resistance right there uh, on the daily. Uh, there you go. Mm -hmm. Yep, a little premature. And, but yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway, just a just a very clean, nice trade, uh, and it did. Uh, what was it? Forty-one cents. That's a nice little, nice little trade there. All right. Uh, nothing else to say about it. Well, I, I just love them when they're they're <laughs> they're clean like that, and you and you never feel any pain. It just goes. Uh, you know, pretty much straight up from with the entry. Well, I think I have nothing to say left about this, but it's a great segue to the last one that we want to talk about, HMNY. Mm -hmm. Look at this daily chart. Just broke out, just getting underway, taking out a lot of days of resistance, prior support, resistance, and then you get a stock that Holly calls near the end of the day, such as quarterback. Now, quarterback, don't get me wrong, it's my it's a strategy I submitted, and I love it when it works, but guys, two different animals here on the daily chart. You guys see what I'm seeing here? I mean, I would have loved yeah. to have seen Holly call that out maybe down here, which was like we were just talking about on VNO, okay? But we gotta say, you know, that daily chart is a bit extended. And when the daily chart's a bit extended, I'll tell you what, it becomes a game of musical chairs. If you start buying these candles up here, you better be quick because when the music stops, there may not be a chair for you to jump in. And so I think that's kind of what happened here on Holly today. We just got a little bit of volatility up here, went to new highs, pulled back, and then it uh, just got a bit too volatile. So I would never also second guess Holly's exit strategy on a stock that is this extended.
Big mm-hmm. difference between that and this. Okay, mm-hmm. so look left, then move right. We read from the left to the right. I like to read my charts daily and then zoom in. So, and another wanna, uh, another comment on that VNO that may be tip one to you watch uh-huh. for a potential Spring turnaround. Trade. You got volume coming in, you got, um, uh, uh, yeah, that could be one to watch if it takes out today's uh, highs in the next few days. Uh, maybe one that could be a nice little hold there for you for a yeah, while. Yeah, could be the beginning of a uh, mm-hmm. could be, could be, the, be the beginning of a swing trade. Easy for me to say. All right, uh, now we'll come to the trade of the week section. Uh, wish we had better news for the trade of the week. Although the good news is for this week and JSO, we have a non-issue. We have a no trade. Um, let's go to the daily chart. As I said earlier in the broadcast, people know me that like uh, that know that I like to pay attention to these giant washout bounce candles. And this was kind of an algo hunt midday that came out across the board and a lot of solars. And this is how JSO finished up for the day, being a solar stock. Well, the way to play these type of washout bounces is I expect, I fully expect the price to take out the high of the washout bounce candle. And that's when the trade would be on. Well, for whatever reason, the solars opened up down and they had a horrible day yesterday and another, not a very good day today either. So it was just a big downdraft in the bigger picture. But why were some of the reasons that it caught our eye? Well, for one, this one showed up on Andy's pullback above the 50-day moving average. What do we have here? We have a stock that broke out numerous green days. And look at the volumes here. Volumes. Let's take a look at volumes. 1 million, 1. 1 million, 1. 1.5, 1. 1.3, 1. 1.2. Then you get back here and we're talking... 300, 400, 300. So this thing was double or triple the normal volume in the last two weeks. There's a tail right there. Nice move up. Do we want to chase these candles up here? No, but we had a nice consolidation that looked like a really nice flag that just so happened to have gotten caught up in a algo stop hunt. And so pretty much um, this was the best of the best that we could find going into the weekend for reasons that we could explain. But we still made it conditional, didn't we? We made it conditional, mm-hmm. uh, a breaking of 755. So 756 is the actual trigger. You guys that have the price alerts know what the blue line means. The blue line means that's a working alert. It has still yet to be triggered. Now, let's talk about this. Typically, I'll say, you know, the trades are good for the whole week. But you know what? I fully expected this thing to break above yesterday's high. Um, I'm sorry, Friday's high on Monday. And it didn't. Um, it it faltered. And so now I'm not so much excited about the fact if it does turn and go, I mean, you could participate, but maybe you want to give it a really tight stop because typically um, this should be the washout candle and I fully expect price action to move higher immediately after. I did not get what I expected. Therefore, um, I'm kind of lukewarm on it now, so I'm going to leave it up to you guys. You know, I, ideally the trade may go out this week as a non-event, non-trade, non-triggered, but that's why we're using trigger points right now. Maybe next week we may have a different type of a trigger point, but in this market, um, it's been hard to find a, a, a lot of stocks that are going up. It seems to be a focus of a few and a big few, so we're trying to be very uh, conservative on at least the entry. So. No trigger in JSO. Um, got some sad news about Fred. We lost our friend Fred. Um, Fred Fred did break out, uh, did what it was supposed to for about uh, a day and a half. <laughs> and that was it. Um, so we got a little bit of alpha in Fred. But for the most part, I believe it was 645 right there. I want to put that line in where the stop was. That's where Fred got stopped out. Um, again, that's trading, guys. It's not going to. Not, not the first time. It's not going to be the last time. Um, but uh, Fred was uh, taken out. The idea behind this one was the incredible short float and short squeeze that we hope that we never got. Twitter. I have something to say about Twitter. Um, I hope you guys were here last week because I mentioned and I made a point that Twitter did what it was supposed to do for the first two or three days. Boom, boom, boom. And then it pulled back to what we talk about, prior resistance becoming current support. So this became a pivot level. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so five days ago was our last time meeting on Twitter, and I said to everybody, I said, well, Twitter Twitter pulled back, basically pulled back to our entry point. So we're dealing with a pivot level here. I would not be surprised if, or I would would probably even suggest that people raise their stop 
Um, this is the uh, stop that's still open, and we're going to have to leave this open because this is what the trade of the week called for. But it looks like Twitter is hell-bent on not digging in and creating a higher low and pushing off of that level like I had hoped. So I had mentioned to some people last week, if you were holding Twitter, there's probably nothing wrong. It's probably a good idea to raise your stop up to a trailing stop because if it breaks this level that it should be holding, then all bets are off. And it seems as though all bets are off are in Twitter. And so, um, you know, again, we're going to have to leave this as our open stop. Maybe it bounces. Maybe Amazon buys it this evening. We get lucky. Who knows? Uh, but we, we shall see. And then lastly, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to toot my own horn. This is a bit of a humble brag here. I told you guys that Micron was running into some serious, serious resistance at this blue line at 30. 660 and that you probably should consider selling some or half if you have not done so or if you've done so by selling half down here and you want to fade out of the rest of it this is probably a great place to do it well as it is trade ideas doesn't have weekly charts yet so why was I looking at that level well let me show you and this is the kind of stuff that helped Andy and myself outperform the S&P when we traded uh, managed money in the Ditto trade account for three and a half years. We would have been fading out. And then our last piece, if we look left, that's exactly uh, 36.50, right on the screws, right back here. That's mm -hmm. why I said 36.50. Honestly, Andy and I would have been selling at 36.45, knowing that as soon as we hit that level, guess what? The supply is going to come right back and smack you in the face. And boy, did it pretty much within a dime or so. So mm -hmm. hopefully that resonated with some people last week. Um, if they were long Micron, we're not quite sure what to do with remaining shares. But again, this is a weekly chart going back. And this is why we say look left, people. Uh, that's where the story is told. Okay. That's that for trade of the week. Um, I had mentioned that we might look at a couple sectors. I've already I've already gone through and looked at them all. So rather than you know go through that whole drill, a couple of things I'm finding interest in retail is starting to look a little interesting to me. Um, starting to come out of those doldrums and have that trend change lubricant kind of a look to it. So you know there is probably the line in the sand for the XRT dug in down here where it should have and moved higher. Maybe it'll go sideways for a little bit. But XRT is showing a little bit of life. Um, what else? Well, before showing? you move before you move on, Steve, I want you to pull up the uh, USO chart uh, right after looking at that XRT. Pull up, and, pull up what, and, MU? USO. Oh, USO. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do the MU too, Don. Hang on a second. Yeah, yeah very similar to that. Yes. If you go, if looking at the three months there, the last two months, you know, yep. the XRT is kind of, and it just popped up right exactly. out of that range. Yep. And that was it's very the, similar. Yep. And thank you, Andy, for pointing that out. It's uh, possibly an early look to what USO just mm -hmm. did. So I'm not seeing a whole lot of strength other than oil and oil sector and retail possibly. And then XHB, the home builders. Um, they uh, they they dug in and bounced and they're moving back higher. So, you know, they may be one to keep an eye on. You know, I know the uh, the fundamentals don't necessarily reflect maybe what's going on there, but um, for the most part, uh, it's hanging on. And I haven't really seen much else. You know, look, I'll I'll show you financials real quick, but they seem to be kind of um, extended in my opinion. XLF and the banks. Uh, there's XLF actually actually flagging. So. Uh, maybe I should change my tune there a little bit on the XLF. The banks, on the other hand, uh, a little different. Um, the KRE and the KBE, they've had a really long extended move. So a um, mm -hmm. little bit of life there. But I, you know, on second glance, that uh, that XLF doesn't look that bad the way it's kind of pausing here mm -hmm. and waiting for some strength to push above. All right, Don, you might be right. Make my uh, I just looked at it, yeah. Yeah, let's go up. To, uh, go the, uh, intraday. Go to my intraday and let's see what Micron is doing after uh, earnings and that is right. very important is very important to know and uh, again going back to my single stock window mm -hmm. earnings date 0.75 just so you know 0.75 0 0.75 means it's today aftermarket Mm -hmm. 0 0.25 means it's today before market. If you see a negative number in earnings date, then you know the earnings are behind us. So tomorrow, MU is going to show us a negative 1.0. Earnings are one day behind us. All right. Okay. Let me turn off 
postmark it because I can't stand that. Um, so that's it. Uh, I want to I want to take maybe two or three chart requests. If you guys have been sitting on one, we're going to have to end about maybe 10 minutes early today for a couple of reasons. But uh, we do have time for uh, two or three or four chart requests. If somebody's got something they're sitting in and they're not sure about, you can type it in and we'll take the first three. Um, it always helps to know if you're long, if you're short, if you're thinking or not thinking. Gilead. Uh, we got two. We need one more. Somebody was thinking. Gilead, first blush, is a biotech. So biotechs can always have. Okay, we got some symbols. We're good. Thank you. Um, biotechs always have the inherent risk of overnight risk being the fact that they're biotechs. And at any given moment, the FDA can throw them a curveball. Now, Let's take a look here. Not bad. Um, definitely a solid floor of support at that level. Um, the pulling back is nice, and it's been breaking out of that pullback that it's got. So now that it broke out of this pullback here, I probably would like to continue to see closes above this level, which looks to be about 83, 48, something like that. Um, bit of bit of a rejection wick today. What's the IBB doing? Let's take a look at the big sector. Kind of, went, kind of looks yep. the same. However, kind of IBB had a rough day there, Don. So um, I don't know where your entry is. You, you can keep it to yourself. It's not important. Um, I'm, yeah, but um, I really would like to see the price stay above this congestion. If it drops back into this congestion, then all bets could be off. We'll see. All right. Um, Tell you what, Don, I'm going to pass you up on because you got two squeezed in there. We're going to go to Lance, DRNA. DRNA. Okay. Um, another, definitely another biotech. Another biotech. Uh, it broke out above that level and has expended a lot of energy and a lot of volatility as well. Um, I'm seeing kind of a topping tail here today. I hate to say it. Um, so what in a perfect world this thing could do is it needs to really stay above the 438, 440 level. But as you can see, the last four or five days have had very wide range candles, uh, which could also tell you you may want to downsize a little bit on your position sizing. You know, back here, that's not a problem. But when the volatility kicks in, we have wide range bars. It makes it harder if you're using your full position size. So, um... I don't know. Any thoughts on this one, Andy? It just looks like it's kind of yeah, getting up today it, with a topping tail. Yeah, it could have. Uh, and the thing about that, I would like to see it get above five and close for a few days, <clears throat> you know, if I'm long this level. thing. Yeah, yeah it's five. A it's a huge psychological level, and uh, it's having a hard time uh, staying above there. So yep. uh, a couple of more attempts, it could fall back to that level Steve's talking it, about. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the flip side, on the good side, if you can get a close above $5, that's yep. a good thing. You put that in the mm -hmm. uh, pro check mark box. All right, last one, and then we're going to call it a day. I think there was some news on this one that came out today, wasn't there? Some rejection from somebody. I don't follow this. It stuff looks closely. like it, yeah. uh, Look at what's interesting here, okay? Not only did the smart stop currently at these price levels is looking all the way back and saying, ah, there's a gap there. What do you know? Mm -hmm. Not only is that the case with the smart stop, but that's also the case with the price action. Okay, so if you were looking for a bottom fish here, um, the bounce at the close was nice. Um, I think, like I said earlier, there may have been some news. So if there was some news in this thing, just be aware there could be people coming home this evening from work that are along this thing and are going to be, oh, but what now? You know, let me put my sell order in. So there might be some more bleeding tomorrow. Could be. I don't know. But the top, not closing on lows certainly does help. Um, and then bouncing off that level makes perfect sense down there that it was, in fact, a gap fill. And the algorithms probably were using this as a target. You know, humans have to program the algos. Algos have to run themselves. But algos need input. And a lot of times the input can be uh, filling of the gaps. And that looks like that's what happened there. So that's all I've got mm -hmm. to say on that one. Therefore, uh, it's time to uh, kind of wrap it up. Let me bring up my... Um, Dun, 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 dun. present mode <laughs> <laughs> what me singing 
All right. Yeah. <laughs> Trade Ideas Podcast is a weekly event. Uh, we had Brian Shannon on last week. Brian is going to be our keynote speaker um, on the weekend at the uh, Holly Summit this Sunday. Uh, it was a good trade. It was a good podcast on Friday. I don't know who this Friday is going to be. Um, but uh, you can go to Google and just search for Trade Ideas Podcast. Uh, iTunes Store should have it or any other um, type of uh, downloadable app for podcast there it is ai powered whoops i always try to double click into that ai powered in all caps this is your current promo code guys for thanking you for listening to us drone on here it gives you 15 percent off your first month or if you want to jump right into the year uh, you can do that as well i'll tell you what i'll let you in on a little secret here if you ask nicely if you do a one month at 15 percent off using ai powered and on day 29 you say you know what i really like this i want to I want to extend my subscription for a year. Can you guys honor that? I, I bet you we will. So um, just keep that in mind. And here's the differences between the standard and the premium. A lot of people do start off with standard, then move to premium, as we saw earlier. But AI powered at checkout, in all caps, is your promo code. And don't forget, you get a free one-on-one -on -one session included with something um, just as small as a one-month subscription. Um, contacting us. Uh, the best place to start is info at trade-ideas.com, and that way your email, question, comment, or feature request can be routed to the right department. If you want to reach me directly, you can go steve at trade-ideas.com. Same with Andy, andy at trade-ideas.com. The phone number, I really wouldn't use that unless you've got an accounting question. Uh, usually you're going to have to leave a voicemail, and one of the people from the accounting department will call you back. But with that said, we do have live chat support at trade-ideas.com on our homepage at the bottom right. You've got that orange chat bubble. Uh, that is being manned by pretty much the whole support staff during the market hours, and we can get you immediate assistance. At Today Trader is my Twitter handle. Um, at Trade Ideas One is the CEO Dan Merkin, and you're welcome to follow. And that's it. Uh, that's all we got for today. Thank you, Andy, for your contribute contributions, <laughs> contributions. <laughs> Anything else you want to add? Uh, hey, no, no, just uh, thanks, thanks everybody. I will uh, see you guys on Thursday. We'll have some uh, have some good stuff then. So thanks for thanks for joining us today. Sounds good. All right, and uh, maybe we'll see some of you all in the uh, live web stream broadcast this weekend of our summit again at Today Trader. I've been tweeting the links if you want to sign up for that. All right, talk to you later. Bye bye. Bye bye.